<clears throat> I'd like to first thank you for this opportunity um, to speak before you. I'd also like to thank uh, the arresting officers that are present in the courtroom today. I know they have a difficult job, um, and I am grateful for all that they do. October 2nd, 2019 was one of the, um, the worst days and, and also one of the best days of my life. Um, I was caught doing a unthinkable, unspeakable action um, of which I am suffering severe consequences and I will continue to suffer those consequences for the rest of my life. Um, I just want to say that I am uh, I'm extremely remorseful. I'm, I'm beyond sorry. Um, I was entrusted to educate hearts and minds and I failed to do that. I betrayed that trust. I let down hundreds of people, including their families, and I'm working every day to be a better person, a better husband, and a better friend to all those I encountered. <clears throat> Throughout these four months since my arrest, I've taken a, a painstaking moral inventory of who I am as a person, and I've discovered that um, what led me down this rabbit hole of addiction was an inability to express my emotions, an inability to communicate my anxiety and my depression, and um, an unimaginable feeling of trying to make everybody like me. I now know that it is okay not to be okay, that it is okay to make mistakes, that it is okay to say no. I've learned this through weekly counseling with an individual therapist who has taught me to realign my, my values that I was raised on. I have two wonderful parents who are here today, as well as a brother. And um, they taught me what it means to grow up in a loving family, to support one another, to love one another. And I am forever grateful for that. I also have uh, attended weekly group therapy. I have um, gained a sponsor whom I trust greatly, who I have shared everything with since this has happened, who I rely on for support and understanding. My wife and I have been attending couples therapy once a week, and it has been, um, it has made all the difference. I feel like a new man. I feel like I'm able to communicate effectively and, and talk and express myself. My relationship with my wife is stronger than it has ever been, and I love her for this, and I will always love her for this. The unconditional love and support that I have seen through my family and through my friends and community has been, without a doubt, the greatest thing I could have ever asked for. I have secured stable employment with my uncle and my father, whom I idolize and respect, and I um, enjoy the challenge that that work brings. I enjoy the atmosphere that that work encourages me to continue to ask questions and to solve problems. Most importantly, Your Honor, I feel that I have become a better role model for my three children, that they will grow up with a father who loves and supports them and understands that it's okay to be vulnerable, it's okay to make mistakes, but it's okay to ask for forgiveness and it's okay to not be okay. I want them to see that I am the person that loves them, that cares for them unconditionally, and that will be there for them as they go on their journey of life. My road to recovery is long. It is by no means over. I have secured uh, a reservation for a rehab facility outside the state of Ohio. It is a two-week reservation. Uh, and with your permission, I would be grateful to attend that in order to better understand my emotions, my actions, what led to those actions, and how those actions will never happen again. Again, I want to express my sincerest apologies to the students, to their parents, to my colleagues, to my family, my friends, and all the loved ones who are out there supporting me. Through all this, I have learned the beauty of unconditional love 
and I know I will always be there to return the favor to them. Thank you again for this opportunity to speak. Well, I did read the PSI, and I have read the sentencing memorandum. You had no involvement in the criminal justice system before this. I have to say, uh, there were many things included in the sentencing memorandum, Mr. Spicy, which were very interesting and informative and gave me a lot of background. I, I will say, though, that for me, the most The one that impacted me the most was his wife's death. Great judge. Right. Because it was such an, an interesting chronology of how she viewed his trip down the rabbit hole, so to speak. And uh, she's a, a very observant woman and obviously a, a very loving mother. And she was very honest about her own feelings and her own anger, which of course this situation that you created has in impacted a lot of people. And I think you do realize that it's impacted yes. your family, it's impacted the school, it's impacted a lot of other people. Uh, but of all the people it's impacted, uh, it's hard for me to imagine it's impacted anybody more than her. And the fact that she wrote this letter was, it was, very poignant to me, that she, the thing she said, because she didn't pull any punches. She's pretty mad at you. And she doesn't have a right to be mad at you. And, uh, but she's very committed to being a good mother, and she's very committed to doing what she can to help you be a good father, and for your children to grow up in stability. I absolutely understand the state's position. This is a difficult case. I have before me an attempted unlawful sexual conduct of a minor. I don't have, thankfully, a victim, which is a tribute to the police work, which I don't know that the community really appreciates how much of that work is going on behind the scenes that prevents people from being victimized. And it's, they're unsung heroes, in my opinion. They're out there doing this, and, and they do protect a lot of people that never even knew they were protected. But I do believe in this case that community control is a sufficient punishment. The defendant has demonstrated that he is willing to undergo the kind of treatment that he needs. He has demonstrated sincere remorse. He has accepted responsibility. He's made no excuses. And uh, for that reason, I am going to send him to community control. I'm going to read the conditions. If you have any questions either side, let me know. And if the prosecutor has anything I've not read that you'd like me to consider, please tell me. Be a period of three years, drug and alcohol testing at each report date, maintain verifiable full-time employment of at least 30 hours per week with 20 hours per week of work service if you're not working. Sex offender supervision, obviously you must register as a tier two offender. I read that to you with the plea, you've executed the form today. Costs are $100, fine $1,500, supervision fee $750. Financial obligations are due in full, aren't it before January 26, 2023, which is 30 days before you're due to expire from probation. You must complete a minimum of 20 psychological counseling sessions by December the 1st. You must also install what we call a web blaster. It'll be on any phone you have or any computer you use, and you are banned from all social media. I also want you to attend uh, sex offender counseling with Gary Act. And if your probation officer doesn't have information regarding that, you can contact our office and I will tell you maybe Mr. Stelis is for it. If you test positive for drugs, alcohol, pick up, you can pick up a new case, fail to report, violate any conditions, including being on social media or violating anything that I wrote to you today, we'll hold a hearing and if you're found guilty, you serve 18 